Hello, saints. I pray that you all are doing well and that God is continuing to bless you with his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. Uh, we're continuing our study of the book of uh, Thessalonians. We're going into the second chapter in our booklet or the second lesson in our booklet. We're, we're actually just getting started in, our, uh, in, in, in uh, chapter one. Uh, in the Bible, in Thessalonians chapter 1, we'll be starting with verse 1. We're going to actually walk ourselves down through this. The way that the author has written the book, we're going to use a lot of just verse by verse, and we're going to walk down through uh, a lot of the verses. Uh, and so you'll see that in your, in your studies of, 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 of your booklet, and so that we can get into the details of all the verses uh, in the Bible. Now, he may not get into every verse. Some verses might be self-explanatory, and we may not go into details on every verse, but quite a few of those verses we will. And so uh, that's our plan. So I pray that you all have a, you know, have a booklet. If you don't have a booklet, please uh, let me know. Uh, some booklets are at the building. You can go by on Thursdays. I'll pick your booklet up. You can contact me. I'll make sure that you uh, get a booklet. I have a few of them here at home with me. Uh, because I've had some people that said it was easier for them to maybe run by my house. I want you to get a booklet. I want to get uh, all of us uh, engaged in, in, in our Bible studies, in our worship services, in everything that we're doing. So uh, please, please uh, stay engaged. Uh, you're going to probably hear more about this, about just staying engaged, because uh, we want everyone to just remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in this good work that the Lord has left for us. Before we get started, let us all bow at this time as we go to God in a word of prayer. Father God, we bow our heads at this time. We, we come thanking you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Father God, we pray and we ask that you help us to, to study your word and learn from it. And as we learn, Father, help us to apply your very teachings to our lives that we might be better of servants unto you. Forgive us, Lord God, of our shortcomings. Strengthen us, Lord God, where we stand in need. For it's in your son, Christ Jesus, I pray. Amen. All right, at this time, I'm going to um, I'll pull up my, uh, my PowerPoint screen, and I will uh, move myself uh, to the corner, and we'll actually get started in our lesson. So let me just do that. And... And... Where is the picture of me? Oh, man, I'm not sharing. All right, we'll get there in a minute, guys. Let me find the share screen and share. Yeah, that, that'll help a lot. Let me share the screen. And all right, that looks a whole lot better. All right, appreciate your patience, guys. All right, again, we're going to continue the study. Uh, we're uh, on our, um, our uh, intro screen. Let us go to the next page. The study of First and Second Thessalonians. And again, we're going to work these down through verses. And I'll, I'll be referencing a lot of other verses uh, uh, throughout Bible uh, uh, verses across the Bible as we go through these studies. So uh, Thessalonians uh, 1. Uh, and chapter one and verse number one. And we're going to put the, that verse up there as well as, as we give reference to all of these. Uh, Paul, in, his, in this writing, he starts off uh, uh, with, his, with his name as well as Silas and, and Timothy. And he, and he states here, it's to the church of the Thessalonian in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, he said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Notice here that Paul refers to uh, these brethren as, as the church uh, of the Thessalonians. He, they are the church. Uh, they are that group of people in which that uh, God has called out. Uh, here we see this word uh, uh, church. The Greek word ekklesia is translated church. Now, initially, or originally, this word, it didn't just re refer to just the called out, the select of God, but it referred to just any public assembly that was called together by a notable official. Uh, however, since the Lord's church is spiritual in nature, 
the call out of the New Testament church is very uh, distinctive. Uh, it is special. The church are those that are the, the called out of God. Uh, much different than those that are called out for, for other reasons, for any a political reason or civil or any other type of social gathering. This is the church is much different. We're much special. We're called out for God and for God's purpose. And so that's what Paul wanted them to know right off the bat. He, he addresses them. You are the church. You're that special group of people. You've been called out for a special purpose. And that thing that's as Paul talks to them in, in, in Thessalonica, that same message uh, uh, comes to us today. We have been called out. We're a special group of people, uh, very distinctive for the Lord's work. Still, as we're looking at just chat, verse number one, I'm going to get some reference to just verse number one here. Uh, Paul gives a, 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 a scripture or two in, in, in Second Thessalonians, and I want to refer to it as it relates uh, to this, as it talks about just the church and, and these people and how they are called out. He, he writes, he said, but we are bound to give thanks to God always for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because God from the beginning chose you for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in the truth, to which he called you by our gospel. Notice that he called them by the gospel uh, for the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. He called them, but they were called by the gospel. Um, it wasn't some voice in which that an individual themselves may have heard that no one else heard and, and God called them in some way like that. It, it did not happen like that. They were called by the God. We are all called by the gospel. The gospel message that one has heard, we have all have heard it. It's that same message about his son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who, who came here to the earth, this earth and lived a perfect life, uh, died a cruel death that we might have the right to eternal life. It's that gospel, it's that message that we're called by. Do you believe that? It's, it's that belief and obedience to that. And when we accept it, you are part of the call. Um, Paul writes in, in Romans, the chapters 8 and verse number 20, he said, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called. They are the called, and they are called according to his purpose. This is, you call for the purpose of God, as a servant of God, to be God's servant. You, you, you're not called for anything of your own glory. This is, we are called to glorify God. So those that are in the church, they are called for God's purpose to serve our Lord to the service of Jesus Christ. Uh, notice what Peter writes in 1 Peter chapter 2, and verse number 9 and 10. He said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. He's talking about the church his own special people, that you may proclaim the pra proclaim praise of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And that's what Paul wanted them to know, that Paul, Paul was getting this message out to them, wanting them to know that they, they, you're a special group of people. That's what he was sharing with those in Thessalonica. Still there in verse one, this is just positive. Is he, 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 this, this is what he wants to uh, uh, reverberate to them. This is what he wants them to know. Grace to you, grace be unto you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. God's grace involved the sum of all spiritual blessings that are bestowed upon the, the undeserving man through the blood of Jesus Christ. We, we, we've done nothing to deserve what great blessings of grace that God has given to us. We, 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 in no way, we could, we could have done anything that could, that could cause for us to earn grace. But God saw fit because he loved us. He loved us so that he sent his son, Christ Jesus. 
in, in, in John writes there in the Gospel of John 1, verse 17, it said, for the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth, that, 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 that unmerited favor from God and the truth, his word, is what sets us free. It came through Jesus Christ. So that's where we got this from. Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, has made it possible for us to have this, this grace, this love. And Paul wanted those brethren there in, 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 in Thessalonica to know that this is God, God loves you. Uh, you're doing a great work. Continue to do uh, that great work as well. And uh, he, he really had a great love and appreciation for these brethren because of, because of their work's sake, for what they were doing. And uh, th that same message is, is coming to us today. When we read this, uh, the, these verses, uh, know that God is, is looking at us the same way that Paul is looking at those there in, in Thessalonica, when you're doing the work in which that God has, has asked and called us to do. And we're called out for God, for his purpose, to do the work. Well, let's look at um, uh, verse number two, and you can, you know, this is, I pulled this, you know, verse right, you right out of your Bible, you can look in, in your Bible then and see the same thing. Uh, we give thanks to God always for you all. That's no, it's not possible. We give thanks to God always for you all. Possibly we're making mention of you in our prayers. It's like Paul was really grateful to the church in Thessalonica for the great works that they were doing. Later in, 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 the, in the second letter that he wrote them, notice what he writes there in, in the first chapter, the first couple of uh, verses three and four. Paul said, we are bound to thank God always for you. You're bound to thank God for him. It like, we have to thank you, brother. He said, as it is fitting, it is fitting for us to, 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 to thank you and the reason, he said, because your faith grows exceedingly and the love of every one of you all abound toward each other. They were, this was like they were loving and caring for one another. Said, Boy, this is a great example of what God is looking for in his people. It's what they are displaying. This is what we need to be gleaming and, and taking in and saying, this is, I want to be the same way as, as my brethren that they're in, in Thessalonica. He says, so that we ourselves boast of you among the church of God. Paul said, we're boasting of you. Hey, uh, we've come in and shared this great news of, about Jesus with you, and now you're sharing it with others and you're loving one another. He said, we're boasting of you. We're, talking, we're telling other people about you, about your patience and faith and all of your persecution, everything that you're enduring, you're going through. The tribulations, you, you continue to stand fast. You're fighting a good fight of faith. You know, we too, we should manifest the same type of spirit toward one another as, as they were doing. You know, uh, the Hebrew writer writes in Hebrews, the chapter 13 and verse number one, this is what he says, let brotherly love continue. Talking about love for the brother, love for the brotherhood. When I use the term brother, we're talking about brother, sister, we talk about brethren, the, the church, all of us. Love one another. Let that love continue. Let us continue. We're going to go down to the third verse. Now, here Paul, in this verse, he says, remembering without ceasing. Paul said, we're remembering. you got to remember here, Paul is writing to this church that we're remembering what you're doing without ceasing. We, we will constantly remember, we're constantly praying. It's because of the works of your faith, works of your faith. I love the way he writes that, works of faith. He didn't just say, you got faith. No, works of faith, meaning something is, they're doing something because of their faith in Jesus Christ. Works of faith. But then he goes on, I like to say, labor of love. I mean, you're laboring, they're doing something. And patient, and they're waiting patiently and not giving up. Of the hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. You see, faith produces work. 
if you if you if you believe that Jesus Christ is who he is, you're gonna get you're gonna you're gonna get to work. And love will call cause us to to put in that work. Whatever that work is, you will see to it that it is done. If we love the way that God would have us to. Because we 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 patient, and the reason we're doing all this, because we're waiting patiently, hoping to live eternally with our Lord after his return. You know, Paul makes a reference to these three things that he um, he referenced here in, in Thessalonica. He, he referenced them as well as he as he writes to those in in in, uh, in Corinthians. In First Corinthians, the chapter is uh, thirteen, and we know this is kind of like the the chapter of love. As Paul, Paul talks about love in this chapter, but but just notice the, the these three. He, he writes again about this faith, you know, and and um, uh, hope and love. He said, but now I'm about of faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse number 13. The greatest of these is love. I remember years ago, someone sung a song, what does love have to do with it? It has everything. The Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son because of love. Love has everything to do with it. We cannot please God if we don't love him. We don't love his son, Jesus Christ. We can't please God if we don't love one another. Love has everything to do with it. The greatest of these is love. The author mentions faith, love, and hope. And he calls it the, he, as, as the triad of the Christian graces. Um, when Jesus Christ returns, our faith will be replaced by sight. You know, um, I think that'd be Second Corinthians chapter five, verse number seven. Say we we walk by faith and not by sight. And that's today. I walk by faith and not by sight. I can't see God but I know God is there. But when Jesus Christ returned, I don't, I don't have to have any more faith that he's out there. I will see him. I will see him. So faith will be replaced by sight and our hope will be realized. I don't have to hope any longer. Right now, I'm just, I'm looking forward to that day. I, don't have, I won't have to hope any longer. Once he returned, my hope becomes a realization. I see him. When we're, when we're raised up in the air with him. But notice what he says about love, but love will endure. You know, love keeps on. When we go to heaven, you don't have to worry about, there's no, there's no more, you don't have to have that type of faith and, and, and that type of hope, hoping to get there. You're there now. But love continues and endures for all eternity. So some, some way, even in eternity, we still have to have that, that same type of love that love for God, that love for one another, it endures for all eternity. Oh, God is so wonderful. He's just so great. And yes, we must always love God and love one another. Now let us continue to go. And we're going to look at in verse number four. Um, Paul writes, he says, knowing, beloved brethren, your election of God. Now, election of God. The author asked this question. Now, I'm going to sign one of this. Is, I think there's a question in a book I'm going to sign to one of the uh, groups uh, to answer, to talk a little bit about this as well. He, the author asked this question um, in, in the booklet. Are, are men individually elected or did God choose a realm that he would call his own. Did, did, did God come and tap certain people on the shoulder? Did, did God just come and tap, um, tap, tap one of our brothers on the shoulder, tap one of our sisters on, but did not tap others on the shoulder. Nobody else got that same tap that God gave to select people. And that's how uh, they became this part of this elect group. Well, <laughs> Uh, the Bible tells us that the saved are God's elect, and they are saved through obedience to that gospel, meaning that anyone can be part of this elect group. If 
if they're obedient to the gospel. You see, believers are added to the Lord's church. See, we all are called, but everybody doesn't answer the call. The church are the called out. That you, everyone that gets the same message is called. They hear that same message, the gospel message, that Jesus Christ loves us all. God has sent his son into this world. They're the called out, the body of Christ. It's that realm of the saved. God has chose those that, that, that falls or gets within. Those are the call. Once you fall within that, that realm of God's saved, and there's a way to get into that realm. That is by hearing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, believing it, repenting of our sins, turning our lives around, meaning repent, stop, and turn around, confessing that I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and then being baptized. And once we're baptized, we have to live faithful, live faithful unto death. And that and you're inside of that realm and you just live faithful. We'll, we'll see later how, how scripture talks about that, that. It's a work. You have to continue to do the work. Now, it's not something that I can work myself to, to earn the salvation. No, we can't do that. Not without the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul was saying. These people, they understood, they had the faith that Jesus Christ is the answer. And because of that, they did the work. They did the work. They knew that they were elect of God. And number, number four here, knowing, uh, beloved brother, your election by God. Notice what Galatians chapter uh, 3 and verse 26 and 27 writes, which we're all familiar with. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you were as were baptized into Christ, you put on Christ. So that's how we got there. That's how we got into that realm. Uh, notice what 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 10 says. He said, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election. Well, think about this for a minute now. Peter writes here that we we need to be diligent at this work to make your call and election sure. Well, is it possible if God tapped me on the shoulder, then was there anything else for me to do? If I was just pulled in? Well, all of us have been given this call for the gospel. But then there's, a, there's an act of obedience on our part. And it gets to the point that we have to even make sure that we're doing it all, is what, 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 what Peter is writing to us here. That we have to be diligent to make our call and our election sure that it is firm. He says, when you do that, he says, if you do these things, you will never stumble. So there's some things then if you, if you don't do, if you don't uh, be diligent uh, in this call and, and as part of this elect group or in this realm, then it's possible that you, you could stumble. And you might uh, fall without fall outside of that realm of that election of God. Okay. Let's look at verse number five. And we're not going to go past uh, the fifth verse uh, today, and we'll save, I think it's 10 verses in, in this uh, particular section, and then we'll do the other um, uh, five, I believe, for chapter two in the next week. Uh, Paul writes here, he says, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, not just word. I think you heard the word. Yes, but it wasn't just word. He said, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. We want to look at all of those, the power of the Holy Spirit and in much assurance. As you know, what kind of people we were among you for your sake, power. Paul said the word didn't come to you. It just come to you in word only. He said, but it's also in power. The Greek word uh, dynamis translated, it is power. Uh, it is uh, similar to our modern word of dynamite. Um, you know, dynamite is, um, I think it's made of Maybe some nitroglycerin and some maybe some other types of compounds are put in there, and 
and when you uh, 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 light a blaze to it, it is it creates an explosive explosion. And so this word power that Paul uses quite a bit throughout New Testament in this writing here, and you got to remember now, Paul is led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is having Paul write exactly what Paul needs to write so that we one day, as we sit here today, to understand the impact of what the spirit of what God wants us to get. So he wants us to know here that what we're dealing with here, this word of God and the things that God has put in place, it is power. So we should never underestimate the explosive power of God's word and what it can do, how, how it accomplishes things. God says, my word will not return unto me void. It will accomplish that which I have intended for it. So too often we're depending on ourselves. We're thinking we're the one. Well, it's not us. We just carry that word as simply and as plain as God has intended for us to. And let the word do the work. Let the word do the work. Paul writes in, in the Romans, he says, uh, he's he talking about the gospel of, of, of God's power. He said, the gospel is God's power of salvation. And he says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. He says, for it is the power of God to salvation to everyone who believes for the Jew first and also for the Greek. Power. Power. The word is powerful. Then he goes on, he talks about not only but in power, but in the, in the Holy Spirit. Let's just look at the Spirit. And the role of the Holy Spirit was to, to lead and to guide the apostles in, in all truth, revealing the truth. Um, in John the chapter 14 and 26, he said, when Jesus prepared to go away, he says, that, you know, I'm going to send someone back to help, help you. He's going to be the helper. He's going to be your comforter. He's going, to, he's going to guide you and lead you in all truth. He's all the things that you don't have to try to remember everything that I told you. I'll send someone that's going to bring those things back to your memory, to your memory, and you'll know exactly what to write. You're not writing what it is that you think. You're writing what I want you to write. So what we have in front of us, a Bible, is the inspired word of God. The miracles of the Holy Spirit, they confirm the word of the gospel message. Mark the chapter 16, 17 through 20. Uh, you know, Mark, Mark writes about how that, you know, these signs shall follow. He talks about how they're going to speak in tongues. Now, we don't have those miraculous gifts of speaking in tongues today, but they were there. They were there to confirm the word. Well, I don't need the word to be confirmed. I have it in print for me, and it tells me that it is. God's inspired word. Now it takes faith on our part to believe it and live by it. And those that allow that the, the word of Christ to dwell in them richly, they are described as those who are filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 18. Oh, God's word is truly powerful, and is that spirit has moved and worked in those men. But Paul goes on to say, it is in much assurance. We can be assured. He says, as you know what kind of men we were among you for, for your sake. Paul said, well, something else had to be going on. We were mere men. We were mere men. We just not, you, you, you knew that this could not have been us, all the things that you saw happening and going on. Because of, you knew that God was working in us. Hebrews, the chapter 6 and verse number 11 and 12. The Hebrew writer writes, he said, and we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. You know, too often we are, we are, we're looking for something more um, and when we have it all. Uh, Paul is telling them it's, it's, it's the powers and it's in the gospel. Uh, I'm reminded in I think it's one of the book of Kings where uh, uh, Naaman and Naaman Naaman had leprosy and he he wanted to be he wanted to be cured of, the, of his leprosy and um, I think the young lady in, in one of the villages said, "Well, there's a there, there there's a man of God that can that can help you. Go, go talk to the man of God." And I think Naaman went up and he found uh, uh, Elisha, 
And, he, and Elisha told him what to do. He said, go down and, and, and dip into the Jordan seven times and, and you'll be clean. And Naaman got all upset. Like, I, I sure that the man of God would have come out here and put his hands on me and did all these other things. And, but he told me to go down there and dip in the dirty Jordan River. Are there not some better rivers in all of Damascus? I think the, the man servant might tell him, well, you, do you think not if you'd done what the man of God would have, have told you and thing would have you know, worked out? That's, he's a man of God. Well, to make a long story short, Naaman, he did what the man of God told him, and he was cleansed. Yeah. We need to do what God tells us to do. We have the word. The word is powerful. The Holy Spirit is leading and guiding. We're, we're being guided by the Word. The Word is the Holy Spirit. And when we read it and put it in our heart, we know we got the Holy Spirit within us. It leads, and we can be assured that God's Word will get us exactly where we need to be. We can be assured of that. Well, that's our end of our study for today. Um, but uh, as you can see on your screen, I uh, I put questions for you know group one and group two, group three, and group four. I want you to answer those those questions. I won't read them. You can read those. You can get those yourself. And next week we'll pick up and we'll finish off um, uh, lesson number two in our booklet. I'm going to just ask that if for you guys to work together. I'm, I'm the elders. We really want to get everyone engaged and involved, especially if we're not seeing some of our our, our, our brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm missing quite a few people I see on the Zoom on Wednesday night. I'm calling for you that are on the Zoom to call people in your group. I'm gonna be asking all some of my other uh, brothers as well to do the same thing. Call those that are in your group. Tell them, we don't see you in, the, in, our, in our Zoom, and where are you? The one, we love to see you there. You know, do your study. God will bless you. God will bless you for it. You're blessed already. God even bless you more. Well, I'm going to stop my sharing at this time. We'll go back and we're going to uh, prepare to close out in a, in a word of prayer. Uh, God continues to just, you know, you know, bless you, bless you when, when you do what he's commanded of you. So I'm asking that, that let us do it. Get those blessings that God has for us. Let us together bow. Father God, we bow our heads at this time as we come before your throne of mercy and grace. We thank you. We love you. Help us, Lord, to continue to, to read and study your word and, and allow for it to be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Forgive us of our sin. Strengthen us, Lord God, where we stand in need. In your son, Christ Jesus, we pray. Amen. All right. I'm going to say good, uh, uh, so long. God bless you. and look forward to having you on the on the Wednesday Zoom meeting call as we uh, go over our, our questions and call someone else. If you've not seen someone in your group on these calls, in these devotionals and or whatever, call them. Encourage them to come out. God bless you and God keep you until we see you again. Goodbye.